Hey guys, welcome back for another Quest for the Sixes 55 build video. This one's gonna be a little bit of a mashup as we started off by me tearing apart Retro Nova over there so we could steal its engine and transmission to go in the 55. And then in the back of the shop, dad was working on getting power windows, operational, yes, power windows, as well as getting the quarter glass installed as well. So stay tuned, there's a lot of different things going on. Pretty exciting, a little bit of a sad day taking Retro apart. Anyways, just wanted to let you guys know real quick before we get started, we are approximately six videos away from actually seeing the 55 start, run, and drive. And no, I'm not going to drag that over the next six weeks. And then we'll be going into a couple Rocky Mountain Race Week videos. I know they're a little late, but a little late is better than never, right? Okay. Anyways, stay checking back. Let's get to this video. We're actually not starting with the 55 in this build, we're starting with the Nova. It is a very exciting but slightly sad day. So here, for those that don't know, you may be new to the channel, this is my dad's Nova. It's a 72 Nova, we call it Retro Nova. He's had it since he was 16. It sat for years and years and years and years. And then finally in like 2015, 2016, he pulled it back out, painted it, rebuilt it, and it's been through a bunch of renditions since then. He's ran sevens in it. There's more left in it. There's more potential, but decided to make the sacrifice to pull the engine and trans combo out of the Nova and put it in the 55 for this season. So it's exciting in the sense that we're getting to be at the point, we're close to the point where this is almost ready to go in the 55, so it's time to pull it out. But it's kind of sad in the sense that now it's gonna be back sitting and just waiting on another heartbeat eventually one day. So speaking a little bit ahead, the goal is to eventually, hopefully over the winter, build a new motor for the 55, so that way we can put this back in the Nova. After we are not tearing the Nova apart completely, um, Thankfully, we have a whole new Holly EFI system and wiring and all that, so that can stay in the 55. And basically, all we'll be doing is transplanting the engine and transmission from this into that. So realistically, we could probably unbolt it and switch it in and out if we wanted to. So that is that is good news. But anyways, let's get to it. Nova. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. But be good to us. Be good to us. Another thing to note is that something about using this combination is that it's proven. So the com the engine and transmission has been out. We've raced it on race week, drag week, etc. We will be switching over to methanol, so the tuning will switch a little bit. But as far as the actual combination, we do know it works. Go through and check a couple things to make sure it doesn't need to be freshened, I should say, um, before we put it in the 55. But it does save us a little bit of testing time, so to say. So that's another benefit of this. But look at it. I'm so sad. They sit and drive together. Oh, man. Poor bad and poor retro. It's the first year that they're not getting to, to go together to something. Bad Mirror wouldn't even be out. So a tip that might be helpful to you that I always do on our cars, um, I do it, dad doesn't necessarily do it, but I always am afraid I'm going to forget where a line goes. So I always take and I use a bright colored tape and I label everything. So like I label the blow off valves, I label the water mass solenoids, I label everything and then label the lines that go to it. So I do this for two reasons. One is to remember and two is because the bright green tape or bright colored tape catches your eye. So there are so many lines and wires and stuff that's actually tucked away and hidden. Um, you don't necessarily see it so much on here. On my car, it is a mess. And so it's really, really easy to forget lines. And I've done that before. Uh, and that can be detrimental. It can cause really bad problems. So I always go through and label for remembering, for remembering, and then I also label so that way I see it. And then once I put it back together, um, I rip the tape off, throw it on the ground, 
actually and then have to go back and pick it up later this will be really helpful in this situation because it will be a little bit before it goes back together so even though it seems simple somehow a year later whenever you come back to it what seems so clear is suddenly becomes a little blurry And I forget where we were and I forget to film because <laughs> I'm in such a hurry to get it done, but we are, we're making a lot of progress. We're down to smaller things now, so it's going faster. That's good. We need fast. Yep. <laughs> I agree. So anyways, what's going to be going on here is power windows. On the passenger side, you've already got one operating, kind of got that process down pat so you can get the driver's side in a nice fluid video. Yeah, I'm gonna, I had to learn on the passenger side. I've done hundreds of these in Willys and 33 Fords and 37 Fords, 32 Fords, but it's a different deal over here. These doors were built, if you remember, this was a Nomad door and this was something we pulled off of a postcard door that was rotted out. So I had to join them together in here and everything doesn't come out exactly right. And the molds that we made this time were just real thin molds off of a door that was already made off of a door. So everything's a little bit wrong, but it worked. it's working really well, but it takes a little adjustment. So when you think, oh, power windows, pretty simple, right? You just install them and they roll up and down and there's nothing complicated there. <laughs> you can buy them from Summit or Electrolife or Balls Rod and Custom. It can't be hard, right? <laughs> That's what you would assume. Show in this fiberglass door, there's a lot of different steps that we're gonna have to work through. We'll go into more detail later in the video, but show the, the different areas you're gonna have to be working to get these where they're operable. Okay, first remember that a 55 Chevy had bent windows. So these doors were made for the window run channels to go up and down here, not here. So there's a big hinge structure in here that you gotta work around and a steel door has stuff welded in that the, the channel bolts to. And bigger than that, or a bigger problem is fiberglass is, you know, typically, you see it right here, close to an eighth inch thick, even though it's lightweight. So these, these latches are designed to go in something that's 24 thousandths thick. So when you put it to something that's an eighth inch thick, it shoots the latch forward or pulls it away from here. You can see I've added a plate to take up that difference. So the other problem in a 55, six or seven Chevrolet is that the this channel is where the window run channel actually goes. Well, you can see, boom, it hits a latch right there. That's a problem. And when you stack the latch on fiberglass, it's thicker, it moves it into the door more. So I've got to actually come in here and grind this gel coat off or it's actually primer and layer it with fiberglass grind it out and physically move the latch back i've got the doors between the multiple molds that we did and assembly it's a little bit wrong so the, the run channel actually will hit the latch so we're going to move the latch back i've already done and the other thing is there's nothing in here this was a, where a vent window would go you can see the tabs for the garnish molding stop here well that's because the vent window goes in this area so what i've done is 
I've added wood blocks, wood spacers. I glued these in last night and then I ground them down today to give that half inch thickness area. We're gonna put a window run channel in here, go down into a steel channel that you have to line up. That's why when we say it's not hard, right? Well, you have to have the tip. It has to tip the same as the upper. It has to tip this way, the same as this, and it has to remain parallel. Well, it's kind of hard to get in there to measure, but you have to do it. So I've already done it on one side. I'll show you what that is, and then I'll reproduce that over here because I kind of learned what I was doing over there, figured it out. <laughs> I didn't want to show you that. You don't have the time for that. That one's complicated. But anyway, that one's working good. We'll go over there and look at it, and then we'll try to record some of it here to show you how it was done. So the rain's kind of let up after we get done filming. This is gonna be happening for a week on and off. So I don't think any amount of microphone or anything, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know if it would fix like that. <laughs> so just imagine it's uh, it is your it's your shop experience. We can't hear each other anyways when it's rains. So. Normally we hear music, but I can't turn my music on, remember? <laughs> off. Anyways, so this is the side that's working. I know you guys are gonna be like, you can't see through that window. It's just... No, nobody's gonna say that. <laughs> They'd be silly if they said that. It's just that a piece. That would be like making a comment about no floorboards. Oh, look, it's a Flintstone mobile. Nobody's gonna do that. <laughs> Somebody will. So, preface, this is just a template to get everything rolling up and down. Open it up. Let's check out these power windows. Yeah, what's gonna happen is I'll take this over to the table and put a sheet of 3 16 Lexan on it and I'll copy my pattern here. But this has already been done. These are basically the same channels I made for hundreds of willies. We did 40, 41 willies for years and years and years, built them in here. So I just bend up some sheet metal, half inch tall, 5 8 inch wide, half inch tall or close to it. Sometimes it gets a little off like this one but it doesn't matter. And then I weld quarter inch nuts on them. The, the reason I do that is because I can make it adjustable. I'll use a countersink bolt in the door and I'll put a jam nut on the back side of it. And if I need to move it in or out to adjust to get this, because if you just bolt it in there, you may be like this and that glass is gonna have to make a turn or this. So you gotta be straight up and down. And this bolt allows that to adjust in and out. And I basically just do it by eyeball. I look in the crack of the door and just make sure that it's running straight up and down. But it holds it in and it also adjusts it whichever direction you need to go. Okay, that's, so that's the channel I made. Like I say, I make it an inch and five eighths. I'll cut an inch and five eighths piece of strip of, I don't even know what that is. I think that's 20 gauge here. It just happened to be laying over there. So anything, 16, 18, 20 gauge and bend it at half inch and half inch, that leaves it five eighths of an inch wide. The reason is that channel, these fuzzy run channels are five eighths and it takes about a half inch tall. You could go five eighths if you wanted to, but I never did, never will. So you see that fits in there just right. So that's the interior door run channel and I'll use urethane to hold this in. You can pinch it in a little bit and it'll actually pinch the channel and hold it, but I'll line it with urethane in this case. Urethane, the black stuff that doesn't go away. Black death. <laughs> Whatever you do, put gloves on because it'll, <laughs> it will get you. So this one's been urethaned in. I've already done that. So as you can kind of see the blocks of wood that I've sanded down to the right height and then I caulked everything with this black urethane and then the pattern holds the you bend it it's very flexible so you bend it in the corners take it down in the channels push it out the window or the pattern holds it in and i've got these wedges in here they can come out now it doesn't take long for it to dry so this one's working give you if i can remember which way to put the wires here one direction goes up one direction goes down Nice. Bam. Yep, so she can control the windows sitting in the staging lanes. We'll have a switch up in the roof for each window. She can roll either one up or down. 
right up to the point of doing a burnout, she can have the windows down. That's my favorite thing to do is sit there with my windows down until I get to the burnout and everybody's like, put your windows up, put your windows up. As and opposed then I just, to me, <laughs> in my Nova, I'm having the, uh, beep, beep, Jake, Alex. <laughs> Emotion, and you guys have to come over and crank my window up or down because it gets really hot in there. Really yeah, hot. I just I just wait till it's like burnout time and then roll yeah. them up. That's yeah, nice. You're kind of spoiled. I a little. <laughs> you will be in this one too. But anyway, the, this is just a very very basic window regulator. It just goes up and down. There's no scissor action like if you bought a, a one for a '72 Nova, it would have scissor action. This is like we used in the street rods for years and years. And it's just got a motor that mounts down here on a, on a straight run channel. So you gotta get this thing in square with the, with the run channels. And I had to cut this notch out, bolt it in, and then the run channels are bolted in here and up here. This one's here and here. And you see I had to slot my holes. I was just a little bit off. Now I can measure from this door to the other door, but that allows that run channel to be moved in or out. I, that's literally a mistake, because I just look inside and I drill a hole and know that I can do this. I can adjust it. But the biggest deal that I'm gonna have right now is moving this latch back. I did this one last night and I wore a, a literally a shower of fiberglass to bed. It just itches so bad. But I stacked several layers on here ground it down, cut the latch hole back in, put the latch in. I took the spacer out of this side. I even had a, a thicker spacer on this side. So it's back on the quarter panel where it belongs. I took the door, I thought there's no way, you know, you always have to mess with the latches. There's no way that it's gonna work, but <laughs> that's how good it worked. I haven't adjusted it since I did. That's nice. So the, that's all I need. And then you'd see the, result here the fuzzy we usually use stuff with chrome trim around it it's hard to bend that sharp of a radius without kinking it but we also couldn't find it For some reason they've decided that we don't need it anymore so we get just black stuff but it's so, so light it weighs nothing so you've got another day in a door and a window yeah <laughs> i've got so many days in that so for those of you who may not be familiar with the Nova, maybe you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome, or maybe you just haven't seen the Nova previously, let's go over what this combination actually is. So this is a 509 big block Chevy with eight and three quarter to one compression, AFR at 18 degree heads. It's nothing super crazy. It's actually, relatively speaking, a pretty small motor for what we're trying to do with it. Um, this is air to air intercooled. It does have BorgWarner 88 millimeter turbos. We will not be using this intercooler. We also will not be using these turbos. We have a set of new precision 88 millimeter probe mod turbos, kind of mentioned in another video that we'll be using for this. So won't be using the intercooler, won't be using the turbos, won't be using the headers, and also won't be using these waste case, waste gates and blow off valves. So the reason for that, and the goal is, is that we want to leave all of these components, everything that is Nova specific, we want to leave to the Nova. That way in case we, not win in case, but that way when we do switch everything back, none of that stuff has to be changed to meet the new configurations for the 55. So this stuff will all just kind of sit in the corner and we will literally just be taking the engine transmission, no wiring, no plumbing, nothing like that. So that part is nice. Will be really nice just to be able to do a nice, easy swap. But going to try to keep this as together as possible because we want to see it back on the road someday. We haven't had it on the dyno in a while. We've also never had it on the dyno with methanol. We've never ran methanol in this combination. Have ran E85, but not methanol. So the fuel tuning will be a little different. And we do have a lot of new Holly electronics um, that we've never tuned with before messed with so there will be some learning curves on that but last time we had it on the dyno we did see crank 2500 horsepower um trending upwards we know with the boost that we can add and the way it was reacting we'll be in the ballpark of right below 3000 so we'll be seeing 2500 to 3000 horsepower like i said it is a little bit of a small motor um relatively speaking but it should get us to our numbers and the thing is is we don't expect to go out and run a six 
our very first pass. We don't even expect to run a six our very first race. That would just be unrealistic. So we will use this to get us to the point that we can. And then if we have to, eventually we'll upgrade. But this gives us a start. We are losing about a thousand pounds from this car to that car. So that's what's going to help with our ET, um, like speeding up or dropping our ETs, speeding up our mile an hour. So um, that's where that comes in. But as far as this goes, I think the time has come. Can you tell I'm delaying? I'm stalling. I really am. I just don't want to take it apart. I like stuff together. One more thing. I lost my train of thought. Sorry, I've got too many things going on in my mind. But my whole point with talking about the horsepower is that we have seen 2,500. We've seen it trending. We know that we can get close to 3,000. So um, with those kind of numbers and the weight that the car will be, mathematically speaking, it works out that we should be able to run a six, no issues. Um, whether realistic world conditions prevent that from happening, to be determined. But that goes back to what I was saying, like we'll use this, get to the point that we can, and then we'll make the modifications and adjustments as needed to move forward and drop those times. So back on Nova, spent the morning doing some stuff on the 55. So back on Nova this morning, trying to get engine out or working on getting it out. How do you feel about retro coming apart? Well, it's okay since this is gonna become your motor and I'm gonna have a million horsepower. <laughs> You're gonna build me a new million horsepower motor to put back in it. I, I don't know if it'll be quite a million. Um, actually, I'm thinking maybe this one could get freshened up and just go back in. And then the million what horsepower. What would be my point of that? I and then the million, the million horsepower motor can go on the 55. No. That's my thought. The 55 is like, you know, 800% lighter than this. <laughs> so it can get by with this 900,000 horsepower motor, but we're going to put the million in here. Okay. Well, hopefully this one comes back unscathed and just needs a little bit of freshen up. Don't even hope that. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> No, it's really sad. I just put that really bitchin' aeromotive fuel pump on there. You did. I think you I just started it once. It. Well, that works. So, I really don't have that much more to do, and we'll have it out. Well, then get busy. <laughs> okay. Get it out. Okay. I'm trying to take flywheel bolts out, and I usually don't struggle this much, but I am legitimately struggling. Uh, I've had to adopt a new method. So, this is my method here. And it's broke loose now, but it wasn't. And it's a lot easier than it was. But that's how it's going. I took the morning off. One of my sister's friends has a baby shower, so I went to that this morning. However, now back and I just got everything wrapped up and ready. So it's pretty much ready to pull. Just gotta undo the engine mounts last night, called it the night. It's so funny, once you're tired, your problem solving diminishes so greatly like i was trying to get this one last transmission bolt and it was behind the dipstick the transmission dipstick tube and i was like there has to be an easier way like i am just fighting this i was like dad does it all the time he can do it at the track like why am i fighting it and like nothing i did i couldn't make it make sense i come in today with a fresh mind lay down i was like oh duh go in like wrap the sockets this way or the extensions this way and totally took me like five minutes so sometimes it's good to just walk away from it and come back but turn around show you what we're working with and then I'm going to pause on this and i'm going to go start on holly stuff which will be another video but start laying out and routing that so that'll be coming up really soon but let's check it out so here are all of the accessories and other components that came off so part of this will be re reused part of it won't be um, like that intake won't be, uh, it'll stay Nova specific. These mounts, little ears, they won't be. So some stuff will stay with the, with the Nova. 
uh, we're going to be able to leave all of the radiator, intercooler, turbos, downpipes, all of that hooked up. So be easy to reinstall. All the wiring stays. So this is all ready to pull. Put the valve covers back on for a little bit or for a while so they don't get dirt in them down in the motor. But under here, just a pull transmission. So I'm going to drop it back on the ground so we can pull this. But it's a big step to have this coming out. What I'm going to do first is remove this latch. And I'm going to sand the gel coat. See how you can see this line disappears down into here. Well, for some reason, it's angling back just a little bit or forward. What I'm going to do is add fiberglass in here. That'll make this line stay more consistent as it comes up. But I'm, my, the whole goal is to pull this latch back. There's a tab on that latch right there. That tab is what the window channel butts up against. That's back like an eighth of an inch past this wood or where the channel is going to attach to. So the the channel would have to go down in and kick forward instead of running straight down. So what we're going to do is make a mess and add to this fiberglass. Okay, so there's a 55 latch. Pretty bulky thing. going to do now is cut some glass this shape right here and then we'll mix some resin and we'll lay it on here Okay, there's four layers when that's all said and done that'll be uh it'll be three sixteenths less than a quarter probably i may leave enough resin on it that it adds up to a quarter layer it up and then we'll look through with a flashlight and i'll cut the same hole drill these same holes back in it face everything reach inside and take this glass away so that scoots the latch back okay that resin is catalyzed just guessed at. I didn't measure anything. It's just, it's a patch, so you don't have to get too serious about it. It'll create its own heat really quick and it will dry in minutes. I'll be on this in 20 or 30 minutes grinding it. I'm just going to pile it on roll it all at once let's see it's more issue on the inside in here because i'll grind it off out here to where it's where it will be just about where it was before it's tipped in or twisted in that piece will curve in the curve there and join everything together I think that's all I'm going to do. That's a lot of fiberglass. Now what I'm going to do is use a roller to kind of push the resin around underneath that mat, flatten it out and put the thickness where I want it to be, which is in here, up and down, not out here. I'll probably end up doing something in here with Bondo just to even it out. I'll get some acetone on a rag and clean the runs up. But that's done. I ground the fiberglass. This will all finish out and I'll feather it in with Bondo so it's just nice, smooth. It still shuts. Even with the spacer in the latch, it still clears. That just shows how much the door was out of whack. 
but I've, the hard part was grinding inside. I take a three inch grinder and sit here and just feel it and feather it. I probably moved this latch back 3 sixteenths of an inch. I actually ground through right here. I gotta fix that. But that's the only thin spot. The edge of the disc, I can't see and the edge of the disc gets up in there. That's no big deal. So I'm getting ready to countersink these bolts, put the latch in, check my clearance inside, then I'll finish this body work out and I'll move on. I'll start putting the regulator and the run channels in. So that's done. I did a little Bondo touch up. You can see it's very thin. It's, you can see through it, but it's ready for some primer. But now it, it fits where the channel that I'm going to put in will run straight down into the track. We're going to put the regulator in now. These regulators are really nice. I cut that much off of this one over here. If you ever try to use them and they're too long, cut them off. Lower this one down a little bit. So there it goes down. Let's go all the way. So now we're we're down. I'm just going to take the bandsaw, cut this off a little bit. Move this notch. So I've got the window regulator drilled. You set the glass down into these clamps, tighten them up. See, they'll open up and close up on the glass. So I'm going to loosen them so I don't have to reach up in there and fumble around. But this is what clamps the glass. The nice thing about this particular one is it slides. So when it's bolted on the regulator, if your regulator is a little bit out of whack compared to the window, it'll let this channel slide back and forth. Going into lower holes. How do I know that? Because I put the other side in the upper hole and it didn't work. It works, but it the window wouldn't come all the way down. I had to put it in the lower hole. This particular hole is in a recess, so I'm just putting a regular bolt. If it's out on the flat, I'm going to put a countersunk bolt so I can put a door panel over it. I'm spacing this out with just a 3 8 nut to kind of match that. So what I'm going to do is put this in here, put the nut in, slide my window regulator over find the hole so that's holding the nut up kind of center it i'm holding back on it put the bolt in okay that one started okay that window regulator is in the track is in it's opened up, so when I put my pattern down in there, I can just sit it in, try it, and then clamp it up tight when I put the extra glass or the lexan in. Make sure my latch works and it does. So I'm finding the kind of the center. Put this in. I put the channels in the doors. I didn't show it because it's a pain. You don't want to see me fighting window channels. Put this up, push it right in the corner, and stick it in these run channels. It's just stuck in the channels on both ends and up, to, just holding in the door. Let's try this pattern. This is the reason the way I'm getting this in is the there's not room. The channels aren't loose, but because this is masonite, I can bend it and put it in. I think the Lexan windows will do the same thing. Otherwise, you'd have to take a channel out or loose at the bottom. Do that. That seems to work. Now the question is will it go up and down? That's not too shabby. Let's see if it rolls down. Okay, that's perfect. Success. All I need to do is 
take the pattern back out, glue the run channel in, run the window, put well, put the pattern back in, run it up and hold it. Let that dry good, make some windows. This is worse than this is the black death window weld 8609. It's really good stuff, but it's really nasty. I usually don't caulk this to be honest. I don't know why I'm doing it now. I guess I don't want it coming out at 250,000 miles an hour. I mean, she might do close to a million miles an hour. Now, let's I'm gonna put a extra thick dab right here. And then I'm gonna go around this. I'm gonna put a thick wad up here because I really want it to be glued in the corners. And I'll put that extra thick wad right there because it'll actually dry and support that channel. Just prevent, and you can make a mess right here. Ask me how I know. So what I'm gonna do is drop it in, make sure it's way far away from the channels. And then I'll put this corner up. Stick it in the metal channels. Okay, that's all held. Make sure it's sucked up to the glue. It's in pretty good. Too easy. All right, let me put the window back. All right, got it in there. Aim the light down in there. Got to watch your life holders. It's a hard job. They aim it where they can see. Okay, so I'm going to take some pieces of mason, right? And I'm going to put them in these little tabs. These on the steel door would be the tabs that hold the garnish molding in. I'm going to, and they going to do that on these doors as well but for now they're going to hold this channel and push it out okay so that's it that can dry and then we'll put the fuzzy on and we'll be done I walked up and shabam pal, the door that has legs now has a see-through window. What? What? Bada bing, bada boom. Look at that, it's so clear right now. You can even, like you can't even see it's there except a little bit of reflection. Yeah, it won't be that way long. Oh. Unfortunately, Lexan gets scratched really easy, but we got plenty from spares. That's true. So that's something that we discussed. We did optic armor, front glass, and back glass. So that'll be scratch resistant. Yeah. Ordered that from Summit. Um, but these windows just went, mom went to a place in Fort Smith that sells plastics and picked up a sheet of Lexan. Four by eight for like a hundred bucks or something. So way cheaper to do that. A lot cheaper to buy just plate Lexan and we cut them ourselves and there's enough there that when these get scratched, we'll make some more. Okay, watch this. <laughs> it's gonna be like a fishbowl pretty soon. Dang! Look at that. Windows. That's exciting. That's the first time that's that a car's first. had windows. I've I was gonna say, I've never seen that with a window in it. No. That's I literally mean. a first. Wow. That totally changed it, actually. Look down the side, though. It looks like a race car window. <laughs> Wavy? Yeah. Hey, that window's friendly. <laughs> when you wave, it waves back. <laughs> it's true. I don't know if you'll be able to tell it in the video, but it is, it's wavy. Wavy crazy. How exciting. When the front glass and the back glass get in, that's gonna be a game changer because that's gonna add shape to it that yeah. is missing. It changes it a lot. See, there's a sheet I tried, or I didn't try, I used a little cutter. It melts it, but it, it's easy to break off, so. Can you, I, I even get this mixed up, the difference in Lexan and Plexiglass. Well, Lexan's polycarbonate, which is like safety glasses are made out of and a lot of things like that. Plexiglass, you can 
bend it and it'll snap and shatter. I mean, it's really brittle. This stuff, it, that's why it melts because it's soft and you can take that window and just, you can fold it in half and it would crimp it, it would ruin it, but it doesn't break. Right. So right. it's much, much safer. Safer and then I guess more workable to an extent? I suppose. I mean, I know that cutting plexiglass back in the old days, you'd just, it'd take a crack, would just take off and run. Right. This stuff won't it. You can't hardly crack it. Right. So no blue windows. No tinted windows like some some of the others. But uh, clear, clear plexiglass or yep. Lexan. So we yeah. could have done blue windows. I know. Retro so, like the the wheels. Cap and yeah, wheels. The wheels. Oh yeah, the wheels and the tilt front end. Yeah. Old school as people say. But see what I'm talking about about the front glass. So like you've got that it's you see the shape that's supposed to be there, but it's not there yet. Like that, the in between is not there. So that's the one that I'm really excited, really excited to see. It'll look like a car then. But I want to get floorboards in, get the welding done before we do that. That way we're not splattering and. I just want to get the doors finished. And basically tonight they will be, it's nine o'clock. I'm not going to put this window in because that stuff's still drawing. The first thing in the morning I'll have that window cut. We'll put it in and put a big done stamp on the door. Dad said earlier, because when we originally started this, he said, oh, the cool thing is, you know, if it was to ever tap a wall or something, we have the molds, we could fix them. He told me today- put steel doors on it. He said, if you mess them up, we're putting steel doors. So. I've got a couple doors. We just reskin them and put <laughs> bottoms on them. But I think they were actually rusty around the top, like the rest of the car. So we'd probably have to find a pair of doors. Yeah. But anyways, it's going to be exciting to have these wrapped up. Um, I'm just excited to see it. He's excited to not have to work on them anymore. Mika, it's her time. She knows the time. We're not ready to go home, but she wants to go home, don't you? you go. She's keeping her paws tucked under her. Why, are your, why is your landing gear tucked under? You're always a chow with a few words. Silly girl. Okay, and that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for staying tuned in this series. I know it's been a really long one. It's longer than I anticipated, but I wanted to make sure that I was sharing every aspect with you, just as I've said many, many times. Um, don't worry though, after this is over, there's going to be so many exciting things coming up. I'm getting ready to announce some really, really exciting stuff. We've got new projects and new series coming out. You guys are going to, I think, love it. I am so pumped about it. But going back to the 55, we are about five videos away, I believe, five or six videos away from actually hearing it start. So that should be sometime mid next week when you guys will actually watch it drive and get close to actually making a couple passes. So all of the fun, exciting stuff when, you know, we start to see this wrap up is actually going to be happening very soon. Uh, tomorrow's video is going to be a little bit different. I went to the lake this weekend for the 4th of July. Uh, my family and some of our friends did, and it's one of my very favorite places in the world other than the drag strip. So I went ahead and recorded our relaxing kind of relaxing. I beat myself up on a ski, but very, very fun weekend at the lake. So I'm going to share that with you guys tomorrow. Then we'll get back on track with the 55. And like I said, more project announcements coming very soon. So as always, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.